Hello comic book fans, here's Earl Grey. This is what you may call the first wave of the Jared Way curated young animal imprint in trades. Four volumes with enjoyable, part-wise, pretty refreshing new takes on Silver Age or whatever age creations. Each of them more or less a bit more vertigo weird than DC Straight, each of them containing six issues and afterward by Jared Way, some character descriptions and bonus pages. I'll try to give a short overview and review of each of the trades, starting with the, for me, last, uh, least satisfying and working my way up to my favorite series. Mother Panic is without a doubt the series with the most usual or familiar, not to say generic, vibe. It's about a new vigilante in Gotham, a more contemporary and female version of Bruce Wayne. Violet Page is a pop celebrity, somehow famous because she's famous, and a cynic asshole in front of the cameras. Needless to say that her private self is a bit different and more complicated. There's a deluded mother sidekick with dementia or general craziness for whom she cares. There's a bad event in her childhood which is told in flashbacks and which is very probably the reason for her chaotic current love life. Despite, or maybe because, of the jumpy narration style, the title character is pretty interesting and fleshed out quite well. Showing one of the strong suits of all these Jared Way curated stories. A lot of thought, obviously, went into the creation or recreation of the main heroes, the title characters and all the four traits. On the other hand, the counterparts, the villains, felt a bit flat, not only but especially in Mother Panic. Modern art as the epitome of the decadence of the ruling classes, come on. In modern America you surely have more original leverage to hinge your story upon. Besides, besides, the shock value of human bodies turned into art objects has been thoroughly and better exploited in the bat universe already. Think of an example of the doll maker, Dr. Pig, etc. etc. And a second aside, modern art can be lame or blunt sometimes, but fortunately hasn't established murder as an artistic method until now. Visually, Mother Panic starts very strong with Tommy Lee Edwards' realistic noir style, giving us a Gotham Central feel that I was craving for, even though the story failed to deliver something really comparable. Unfortunately, the art changed after the first three issues dramatically and obviously not for the better of the book. Sean Crystal's manga-ish cartoony style doesn't match the title at all, in my opinion. If Tommy Lee Edwards would have continued, I probably would look forward to a volume 2, but so I can give the whole book just two and a half tea bags out of five. And I almost certainly will not buy the next volume. Right off the bat, Shade the Changing Girl is a far better title. Four tea bags out of five. The only reason why it's not higher in my young animal list is that it's absolutely not my alley. I'm simply not the target audience for a coming of age story, a weird teen soap opera. But at least it's a weird one and a very beautiful illustrated as well and that keeps me interested. And if I would have a teenage daughter, this would be the first comic I would recommend her. You can read the tale of an exotic alien bird overcoming and possessing the body of a brain-dead nasty girl as a sophisticated, even crude, metaphor for puberty. But this view is not forced down our throats, so you can read it just at face value as some kind of funny science fiction drama. Even though, though the story is a bit slow and sometimes I wish that there could be a bit more going on. The characters are quite interesting and well fleshed out and the art by Marley Saccone 
helps a lot to enjoy this book. Maybe it's the best art of all the four volumes, the most elegant for certain and a very good match for the title. Objectively speaking, if Carson has a cybernetic eye is not a better comic than Shade. Quite the contrary, only three ba tea bags out of five. But the premise of that story is so much more made for me. A geologist and his crew going rogue in a vehicle called the Mighty Mole, with whom they explore unknown realms below the surface of the earth. This speaks intensely to my inner 12 year old. It's actually very similar to one of my fantasies from back then. To be able to go under, not just to hide from our everyday world, but to experience adventures down there. Even though I would have liked it better if they had missed out on the mythological stuff. I mean, the fungus, fungus creatures from down below are some kind of cool, but mm, meh. I really would have preferred a more quote-unquote of realistic approach. I'm certain you can ta tell exciting adventures from down below without using fairy tale stuff like ancient folks. And with the art of Michael Avon Irming, I'm a bit on the fence as well. On the one hand, I did enjoy the style and the overall look especially sweetened with a thick th sauce of color and structure that Nick Filardi had poured over every page. On the other hand, I'm not the biggest fan of his cartoony simplifications, especially the constant change of the look of the Mighty Mole vehicle. His inability to keep it, also Michael uh, Avon Irming's inability to keep it, and its proportions consistent at least in the beginning, drove me nuts. Anyhow, I enjoyed the title and I'm looking forward to volume 2. Did I mention the fantastic bonus stories by Tom Scioli? All the volumes, with the exception of Doom Patrol, contain bonus stories, which were previously published in three page bits in the original issues. They are all decent additions, but Scioli knocks it out of the park with his penciled lo-fi remix of the DCU. Great fun, even though a bit tiny in terms of reproduction, which leaves me hoping for a bigger sized collection of the Scioli material in the future. So, last but not by any means least, Doom Patrol. Ah, people, I love the Velvet Underground. I love a good gyro or gyro or döner kebab, as we call them here. I love weirdness, fun, the old Silver Age, Doom Patrol, Grant Morrison's darker reimagination. I love all these weird and sympathetic characters. You may call them anti heroes, even though I actually don't know why. And of course, I love how Way and Nick Darrington have stuffed all these ingredients so seemingly effortless into one beautiful and tasty gyro of a comic book. Maybe we chosen ones who could read that magic all smell a bit like garlic afterwards. And we for sure have to get a bit of readjustment to carry on with our everyday boredom afterwards. But at least we all were on Danny the street inside the cabaret, inside the ambulance and there's the promise for more. Maybe the next time with a bit more interesting opponent from alien than aliens who want to milk the earth um, or better Danny for sausage. But that would be my only little point of critic. My rating, five tea bags out of five. The Niles Calder one pages are pure stroke of comic, bone dry comic ingenuity alone would justify the highest ratings. Um, so thanks for listening and watching. Goodbye.